Okay, so we've had a nice session educating ourselves about uh, the Axman scalp cooling machine. Uh, we'll do a quick panel. We are uh, running short of time, I suppose. Uh, the first uh, picture, yeah, yeah. So, so Amish and Jyoti, after using the Paxman, your hair also seems to have been preserved. But as you can see my picture today, my hair seems to have been lost after using the Paxman machine. So that's more on a, a lighter note that I wanted to start. So, so our panel today will be on factors influencing the effectiveness of scalp cooling in the prevention of chemotherapy-induced alopecia. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, let me ask the, the youngest, as I assume, Saurabh Prasad from Kingsway, Nagpur. Uh, Saurabh, are we disease-centric? You know, Mr. Richard started by saying that you're more worried about the disease rather than the patient. So, what is your experience, uh, Saurabh? Sir, I, has, I have a very short experience. I purchased this machine this year in, uh, I think it was functional from April, just before the lockdown. It, it was a very bad uh, time to purchase this machine. But in last uh, five, six months, I have put around uh, 14, 15 patients on this machine. And uh, it has been a variable result. I, I couldn't attend all the presentation, but uh, I have uh, uh, when I use it uh, post AC and Peclet Excel, uh, two to three of my patients have stopped after two to three cycles. And I learned a new thing during this presentation that if we use Peclet Excel before anthracycline, uh, the compliance would be better. So this was a new thing for me to learn uh, from the uh, um, seniors' experience about this how to use this machine. Kalpesh, next slide please. Dr. Meenu, how many patients, what percentage declined chemotherapy in your practice because of hair loss? Amish, for 8%, what is your experience, Dr. Walia? So, 10%, approximately 10% of the patients do decline chemotherapy because of hair loss. And apart from that, Dr. Senthil, I, what I want to say is, more than people who decline straight away, sometimes you find the patients coming late for chemotherapy. Surgery has been done, not taken adjuvant for quite some time, or they have been having a lump for a long time and not really gone for treatment for the fear of probably chemo will be done and hair loss will occur. So people presenting late with the disease is also quite common. If we take that percentage, probably the percentage goes higher. I agree, I agree. Jyoti, what is your experience at your large center, Jyoti? How many run away because they will lose hair? So, uh, Santil, I would say that uh, patients are afraid and they are aversive, um, uh, you know, with the thoughts that they will lose hairs. But when we counsel them well, it is around 10% uh, 10 or even lesser than that, that they actually run away. But many times they delay their chemotherapy. That's what my experience is that uh, when we, uh, you know, ask the young ladies who are coming from remote Bihar, UP, etc., that why you didn't come in time, they many times they said that, you know, we have seen somebody who is on cancer treatment and they lose their hairs. That may make me really afraid. And um, I, I, I'm reluctant to come over for this kind of treatment. So there can be delays also. There can be, uh, you know, uh, reluctance to, uh, you know, take chemotherapy because of this uh, competition. And you know, previously, uh, I used to think that this is more was, is more common in the uh, educated and the outgoing, uh, you know, kind of population. But uh, contrary, you know, I found in many times in, in, in the general OPDs, uh, you know, one patient, which was actually very alarming event, she told me that she was abandoned. Uh, with her two daughters because she developed a breast cancer after once she developed alopecia due to chemotherapy. Uh, she was a villager and she was abandoned. So that kind of uh, thing is uh, existing. And although I will not be able to give you the exact figure, but many patients are apprehensive. They don't completely, dare, you know, not taking, but they are very apprehensive. I very much agree. Beyond the small ramifications that all of us think alopecia is all about. Uh, Mr. Pax, uh, Mr. Richard, can I bring you in here? Arvish showed us some pictures of uh, patients with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma and so on. Uh, I screenshot this from the Paxman website. Uh, it specifically mentions, uh, you know, mentions about certain uh, list things that I've listed here and highlighted in the box. 
Uh, is it because there are some specific reasons that we should be using the device or is it because there is no data? Mr. Richard? I think, the yeah, and, and thank you very much for bringing me into the discussion here. I think the reality is it's the lack of data we have with hematological disease. And we do now see a number of physicians that are becoming more relaxed with the use of scalp cooling with specific hematological disease, but with the likes of non-Hodgkin's, which of course is, is, uh, is slightly different than perhaps leukemia in terms of its, its, uh, its state. So we are seeing a, ch a shift in, in the use, and I think that will change as and when we have more supporting data with regards to its safety. Um, but a historical concern, which I think is very similar to the scalp metastases one with certain hematological disease. So I think watch this space and there may be more use of scalp cooling in this area in the future. Okay, so it's more because we don't have data. I mean, humanly having the maximum experience, have you got any patients with you know liver disease, renal disease, which I've again highlighted there, uh, when uh, at least the website says the machine is uh, to be avoided, squamous carcinoma of the lung and things like that, you know, small cell carcinoma, Amish? Yeah, so uh, just wanted to add uh, the question which you asked, Richard. In fact, my first patient of lymphoma was a lawyer. I didn't know this contraindication existed and before CHOP, he showed me that Dr. Why are you using scalp cooling on me? Because the website says it is contraindicated in non hodgkins lymphoma. Then I googled and there, were phase, there is one phase 2 data on scalp cooling where they had used 16 patients of NHL and CHOP. So I showed that and the gentleman agreed and in fact he had 9th end of 5th cycle. Unfortunately, the machine broke down on the 6th cycle and he had complete alopecia on the 6th cycle. And he didn't pull you up for that, Amish? <laughs> <laughs> not as yet, not as yet. All the good work was lost in the last cycle. Like I that. swear, I swear. <laughs> All right. Uh, any experience with liver disease, kidney disease, carpage, uh, next slide. Amish, any experience with those uh, liver disease and uh, you know kidney disease patients, Amish? Uh, I see uh, if the liver failure or kidney failure, anyway, we don't end up giving chemotherapy to these patients. If you're right. telling me, asking me about liver metastasis, I have used in liver metastasis, like that Japanese lady, all oh, I no, no, I'm not blood. meaning that. There are always some patients with borderline kidney function, borderline liver function who come to us with adjuvant therapies. We kind of adjust the dose and push a little bit, you know, that kind of thing. I'll have to check my data. I'll have to oh, check yeah, my data. You're not able to recollect. No, no. All right. Amish, on that uh, front, what are your tips to make sure that the caps fit best? Uh, so we have uh, five caps right now of different sizes. And uh, I am in talks with Paxman and Access Devices. In fact, we were in talks and because of COVID, we couldn't take it further. I have had few patients who didn't mind paying for individualized cap also. So we had worked out the logistics that in 10 days time, Paxman would courier us the uh, fitted cap. I feel if that is available, that is the best thing what we can do. In addition to that, uh, honestly, this is a, a mantra which I have used in more than 15 patients. If the cap is not fitting well, you have to press on the cap and it works well. People get tired. So I use husbands, I use brothers, I use sisters, sister-in-laws, and they keep doing that for two hours, three hours, whatever. What about mother-in-laws? What about mother-in-laws? You think mother-in-law will do that for two hours on mother-in-law? Uh, uh, maybe take the hair off, I suppose. <laughs> 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 I mean, sure. Yes, I, I understand. So uh, I think the point is that uh, you have to make sure that the gap is fitting well. As Jyoti had written in her own uh, editorial, it says ill-fitting caps leads to gaps. I like that statement, and so I just copied it and put it up there. Nice, nice, uh, you know, catch, catchy sentence, should I say, Jyoti? Uh, uh, what about type of chemotherapy, Doctor Neil? Uh, you must have also used it. Are you very choosy regarding the type of chemotherapy in your patients, or uh, you know, anybody who comes in who you think is eligible should go on the device? So I. I'm, I do not compromise on the type of chemotherapy I want to give for that uh, lady, irrespective of her preference for hair loss or if she's comfortable or not. 
Right. So I will not change the sequence. I generally mm -hmm. using anthracite followed by taxanes, mm -hmm. and do tell them that in spite of these caps, there may be fifty percent hair loss. So I will not change the chemo protocol or. This, what is your explanation for the chemo sequence, uh, you know, and the allocation results that you had with the machine taxanes to anthracite versus the other way around? Uh, what do you, what, do you have any explain? I mean, do you have any hypothesis to explain that? So, uh, Santil, uh, you know, hair loss in general uh, depends upon the uh, alopecia potential of a particular drug. So, uh, as such, also you will see in the clinic that uh, when we use weekly paclitaxel, the hair loss is not as prominent as we when use anthracitis. So, and uh, and it's quite later also. So, it's per se the drug potential to leads to alopecia. That's what is my uh, you know understanding and. Uh, throughout the literature, you know, when I, I know, well, uh, but so, so my thinking was that at the end of the eight cycles or six months or four months of chemotherapy, ultimately the total amount of drug that you received is constant. So you know, it actually defies logic a little bit, but it seems to be happening consistently. Uh, Mr. Richard, do you have any explanation to say as to why the sequence matters in terms of the alopecia? And then uh, you know, Amish, if you also have some thoughts on that. Uh, just one uh, one addition. Yes, 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 because, because you know, you see that after anthracycline, generally after one or two cycles only, we see almost complete alopecia, which is not the case in weekly packly in general, even Correct. when we are not using. So that's why Correct. I feel it is a potential. Okay, uh, Ms. Mr. Richard, and then Amish. Yeah, it's it's a little bit unknown as yet, and we're trying to look at, into it from more of a biological level with some of the work we do with the University of Huddersfield, but. One argument, which may be wrong or right, is that, that as, as the tax stain on the hair follicle seems to be less harsh, or at least scalp could be more effective with it, we believe perhaps that's some of the effects that the tax stains had on it, the hair follicles are in, probably slowed down in terms of growth, so they're not as active as they normally would be. By the time we the anthracycline, there's some already level of protection and less targeted effect. Again, that's only a hypothesis, and, and to be quite honest, I think we're unsure. It seems to be working, and where possible, we would encourage it. So, uh, Central, thanks for yeah, asking. I, do, I don't believe that uh, AC or T has any difference in terms of scalp cooling success rate. Japanese people had shown that AC is more successful than Texan. Right. In my experience also, certain patients, amazingly wonderful hair after AC, but lost after Texan. In ovarian cancer, when we used three weekly paclitaxel and carboplatin, the hair loss was maximum compared to that. So I don't believe. In fact, uh, just planning to start a study about hair health before starting scalp cooling. I have roped in one dermatologist. We will take a sample of hair to see whether it is in anogen phase or ketogen phase and see the hair health and see the success of scalp cooling. I truly believe the hair loss is directly proportional to the hair health before starting scalp cooling. Dr. Mansi and Saurabh, do you, would you want to change your sequence of chemotherapy after hearing to what uh, uh, the data that has been alluded to so far? Taxin followed by anthracycline because I personally believe that the sequence doesn't matter but would you change so? Um, Dr. Sandal, this is Dr. Matsi. I think I am kind of tempted now looking at the numbers, to be very honest. That's why I asked Dr. Bajpai that, you know, how does she decide which patients can get tagged first? And um, so apart from the TH patients, even for patients who are either um, triple negative or I think uh, early stage disease, either ad in adjuvant therapy, I don't think I would mind. Even in the new adjuvant, I'm kind of tempted for patients that would want to use uh, scar pooling. I don't know if there's anything wrong with that. I mean, in terms I, of... I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. I, I don't think as long as you're delivering all the drugs, that's all that matters. Yeah. It's my humble opinion. So, of you, Kalpesh changed the slide. So, Sentil, sorry, very quickly, yeah. what Mansi said, the patients like Dr. Minu said that the patient will not take chemo if they have hair loss. I tried to use weekly paclitaxel first. Because right. I know 80 to 90 percent of the times with scalp cooling machine, she is going to retain her hair, and she is going to get the confidence. Complete chemotherapy. You see, it's uh, God's wish whether the hair is further retained. That is one particular place it has been very helpful to. 
Um, I'm sorry. Can I just uh, pitch in here? Any like I usually use more dose dens, like every 14 days rather than the weekly, packly. Does that seem to have any change in the benefit? Do you want to take that? So I think the success rate would be best with weekly packly dexel. And this is uh, you know although we have used in majority weekly packly only, but I have had a chance to discuss uh, this part with Doctor Hope Yugo also, who also had a very rich. Experience uh, in this regard, and she also feel that this weekly regimen and especially Texans uh, is uh, having a better success rate. So you know, I just uh, want to ask Amish. You said that you don't believe in sequence. Then why would you choose a lady who don't want to lose her hairs uh, to on weekly pack? You look, you look influenced with me. No, 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 no. <laughs> What I said is that if you use dose dense chemotherapy, then the sequence does not matter. But if you use weekly paclitaxel, as you rightly said, in weekly paclitaxel without scalp pulling, what is our experience? After the fifth weekly paclitaxel, the hair starts thinning. After eighth or ninth weekly paclitaxel, you have fifty percent hair loss. By the time eleventh weekly paclitaxel, you have eighty percent hair loss. If you don't use scalp pulling machine, if you use weekly, the success of scalp pulling machine is exceeding eighty percent. That is what I said. But in those days. The sequence does not matter, according to me. Right. So you know, I believe that this is multifactorial. No one factor. Uh, you know, I feel that uh, this is a drug potential as well as the host so host characteristics. So as you said about the hair follicle, yes. So also, I feel it is age related. Also, so in general, you know, uh, in old age there is high propensity of hair loss. There will be some exceptional people who will retain their hair till late, but uh, you know, there is some. Relation with uh, age factor also, hair structure, hair strength, uh, all those features you know put together perhaps will make a difference. Muthi, I wanted to ask you about the hair regrowth. I think the other questions you've already taken. So the regrowth, how did you measure? The reason why I'm asking you this is that patients who were on the machine had lesser hair loss, so they are likely to get their hair back faster compared to somebody who was not on the machine and had 100 percent hair loss. Is my understanding correct, or am I missing something somewhere? Uh, so see, uh, it is uh, you know, uh, if a if a lady is put on anthracycline uh, first, they are in our study we found that thirty three percent of the uh, you know patients only could uh, retain their hairs uh, at the end of the primary uh, you know till the time of primary endpoint. But when they start on taxane phase, they started growing their baby hairs even if they have complete bald before that. So this. The regrowth rate is uh, found to be faster, and again we measure with the same uh, WHO grading that at the time of six week or twelve weeks they should be able to retain grade zero, grade one hairs in the, their scalp. So that percentage, that proportion is uh, much uh, higher in uh, comparison to uh, the patients who are not on scalp pulling. Correct. I I, uh, I I don't get you clearly, Yuthi. Just sorry to you know persist on that. My question was: Let's take a hundred women who were on the machine versus hundred who were off the machine. Mm -hmm. The hundred who were on the machine, as a group, would have lost less hair, mm -hmm. while it was hundred percent hair loss for women who were not on the machine. Mm -hmm. Right. So, when you're talking about regrowth, are you talking about the the percentage of patients in the group that used the scalp pulling but had more than fifty percent hair? Loss, you know, are you looking at the regrowth in that or the group as a whole? Because if you take the group as a whole, obviously it's likely to be faster. So that's the reason why I asked you, am I missing something? So basically, it's a transition. If somebody developed a grade two hair loss, then to come back to grade one or grade zero, okay, that rate. Okay, that rate you're talking about. So it's almost like an individual rather than the yeah, 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 yeah. Next slide, Ramesh. Next slide. Okay, so let's come to the logistics. Uh, so, Amish, let, uh, let me start with Dr. Walia. Uh, madam, uh, how do you minimize daycare time? Because you're going to get stuck with half an hour before setting up the machine, and then you know, 90 minutes afterwards. Uh, how do you? Uh, what are the things you do to minimize the time delays and so on? So, we actually all said and done. We are not able to minimize the time to the same too much. You start the cooling at the time of pre-medication. Right. So before, as soon as the patient comes, 
and sometimes you are waiting the reports or probably before you have not even yet started pre medication you start cooling at that point of time so that is the only way and uh, sometimes when if we are too uh, too much pressed for time so once the chemo is completed the patient is shifted to a different waiting room with the discharge formalities being done the tp approval and everything and the cooling continue so that is all that we can do that's it uh saurabh what do you do saurabh are you around yeah yes yeah please yeah logistics i start yeah i start the cooling before uh, the uh, before or with the pre medication so that one hour cooling is with uh, uh is done before the chemotherapy is started and as usual for one and a half to two hours post cooling we do uh we don't have problem with the space so we don't have to make them wait uh, in the waiting hall we continue with the same uh, in the same uh, bed where they are taking the chemotherapy very good uh, so we have uh, dr mansi what is your experience so far with the device so i'm um, very really started using the device since last um, i think uh, september or october so it's just been uh, almost like a year or less than we had 28 patients so far and uh, like looking at the data and everything i have kind of used it more than patients with fatty cow and we i do mainly breast and gynae so i usually have patients with either ac taxane pc or um fatty cow in ovary patients um so i would say we've had about 50% of patients with uh, less than 50% alopecia in my experience i've always used ac followed by taxane which might change now but they've not really taken their hair um in terms of side effects um mild headaches just one patient discontinued because of side effects and she had severe urticaria post third cycle of pc and we weren't really sure what that was because of uh, whether it was a drug rash or um, something like cold related urticaria so in the fourth cycle we had not given her uh, the cool cap um but i have not had a good experience with ac Okay, Dr. Valia, what is, what about your experience? Sorry, can you come uh, come out? Uh, your 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 experience with the machine on the whole with your patients. How many patients have you had, and what what's your percentage success? Uh, we have not had many patients who have really consented or really wanted to venture out for the machine. Once you tell them, probably the success rate is somewhere around fifty percent because they need to pay extra. at our center for the for the charges of scalp cooling and whatever patient we have used probably the success rate is to the tune of 40 to 50% only okay not not uh, but as good as what the literature report but i think it's it's the learning curve also which matters same is the case with us we started very badly but we are a little better should i say compared to where we were when we started so i think as the time goes by we get better I wish one word on insurance before we close. We are running short of time. Next slide, please. I wish insurance. How do you? Insurance. Do you, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insurance do not pay for scalp cooling. Correct. Uh, the not very smart insurances they uh, get the approval in under the garb of chemotherapy, but the smart insurance companies with smart doctors sitting there they refuse uh, for to pay for that. Uh, there are. few patients who have refused to pay for scalp cooling saying that hey, we might as well lose hair rather than pay for money uh, but majority of people end up paying money i have recovered the cost of my machine long back uh, whatever i had invested in the machine and now uh, and i'm very happy with the use of the machine but yes insurance do not insurance is a problem very good are there any other questions that anybody wants to ask kalpesh are there any questions that you have which you want any one of the panel members to answer can i actually ask a question i have a question Dr. please Martin. go ahead once what are the most common chemo regimens that people are using the scalp cooling device for i'm not talking about diseases but um amish you want to take that yeah so i'll tell you mansi uh, i failed miserably with uh, three days of chemotherapy in solid tumor There was one young, nineteen-year-old uh, girl, uh, rhabdomyosarcoma, iphosphatidoposide, 
whole day we kept this calculating machine on 97 to 100 percent air loss. The second incidence also was same. So multi day chemotherapy is out. Uh, Docetaxel in the standard dose of you know if you are using 100 milligram per meter square, it does not work at all. Yeah, does not work at all. Yeah. So if you are using 75 docetaxel, in my experience, say two out of five patients had retained 30 percent of hair. Remaining we had 90 percent of hair. Where all I have used, uh, I have used in breast. Well, uh, AC, paclitaxel, paclicarbo, uh, weekly docetaxel in prostate cancer. In NHL, in jaw, in colon, falfiri, eribulin, like these are the offhand I can think oh, of. Okay. Very good. So if there are no more questions, Amish, the last slide is for you and me, Amish. The one on the left is for me, and the one on the right is for you, I suppose. Right. Good. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks. Because I'm sure I'll end up with the left very soon, and you are the one who's going to put it. So then the right one is for you. All right, thanks so much. I will hand it over back to Dr. Pavitran, who is the chairperson. Thank you, sir.